picked a good time of year. After a tough winter, it's a phenomenal spring, and life's good here at Rugby Station in the southwest slopes of New South Wales. Been here six generations, and we're very, very lucky to live out here. And um, it's a pretty, pretty magnificent spot to be, I, I reckon. The sun's out, the market's strong, and these cattle appear happy. But for grazier Georgie Hick, there's always a niggling worry. I think foot and mouth is something that's sitting in the back of every grazier's mind that could uh, see our industry completely undone. Seasons come and go, markets will always rise and fall, but uh, Australia's biosecurity is the one guarantee that keeps our markets open around the world. And if we were to have a, a major disease outbreak in Australia, um, it would be catastrophic to Australia. Few diseases have the potential to bring Australian farming to a standstill, like foot and mouth disease. It's estimated that an outbreak here would cost the economy $80 billion over 10 years. While Australia's been free of FMD for more than 150 years, the threat is ever present. Alarm bells are ringing in Australia's livestock industry as Indonesia deals with a major outbreak of foot and mouth disease. When an outbreak of the virus was reported in Indonesia in 2022, it sent a shockwave of fear through Australian farming. While travellers stepped up by washing their feet, Peter Kirkland, senior principal scientist at the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries, turned his research to a potential vaccine. We decided that it was really an, an initiative to be able to have Australia develop vaccines independently of the rest of the world so that we would not be relying on transport and manufacture in other countries. Foot and mouth disease doesn't affect humans, but is highly contagious in animals such as cattle, sheep, goats, camels, deer and pigs. A number of vaccines for FMD do exist, but they're not permitted in Australia because they're derived from live virus. For one, something like foot and mouth disease, uh, there is a vaccine bank, but uh, of course, <clears throat> we can't always guarantee immediate delivery of vaccine. And the COVID outbreak actually highlighted how vulnerable Australia was for some diseases. But the COVID experience with mRNA technology actually rekindled our opportunity to develop new vaccines. Now, researchers believe they've created a vaccine using mRNA that would prevent cattle from being infected with FMD. 100% effective. Unlike traditional vaccines, messenger RNA or mRNA vaccines don't use a live virus. But what is mRNA? mRNA is naturally occurring in all of us, it carries instructions from DNA to create different proteins in our cells. During the pandemic, it emerged as a way to create human vaccines for COVID-19. It works by creating man-made mRNA to instruct cells to create a spike protein, the same as you'd find in a virus. The body recognises these new spike proteins as foreign and then learns how to identify and fight the real virus. It's the most simple way you can think of to make a vaccine. Um, and so it can be applied to multiple vaccines because it's a little bit like software. You just program it for whatever disease that you want to go after. It's very exciting and a really a game changer for human and animal health. Working closely with Peter Kirkland is Peter McGrath from biopharmaceutical company Tiba Biotech. We're a biotech out of the Kendall Square area in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, yeah, we're looking to do some good for the world, basically. With funding from the New South Wales government and Meat and Livestock Australia, TIBA designed, the Department of Primary Industries tested, and the University of New South Wales is preparing to manufacture the new mRNA vaccine. And it's taken a number of years of research to do this. Some diseases can be very simple, but in this case, not easy. I'm a veterinarian by training, and so my role is to coordinate the animal trials. So when we've got a vaccine that we think is going to work, the true test of that is to put it into animals and measure the immune response. You're a good girl. Hey. Department of Primary Industries yeah. vet Paul Hick has been at the forefront of testing the vaccine. After initial trials in rabbits, the mRNA vaccine was injected into these dairy cross cattle, kept under lock and key in this triple ring-fenced biosecure paddock. I enjoy administering this vaccine because it doesn't bother the cattle at all. Um, there's not much in it at all uh, compared to a traditional vaccine. 
So it's actually a very small amount of RNA and um, you don't see the animals develop a fever or any uh, injection site reactions. They basically walk away and you wouldn't know you'd done it. These ones are straight from the trial. They're animals that were vaccinated with a trial vaccine for foot and mouth disease virus. These ones responded well. Uh, we detected antibodies which were neutralising in their bloodstream and we've kept them on to monitor how long that immune response is staying. Remember, Australia is free from foot and mouth disease and the mRNA vaccine contains no live virus. So we can put that vaccine in. It's got nothing to do with foot and mouth disease virus itself. It's a synthetic construct. And the immune response in those animals has got nothing to do with the actual pathogen itself either. By the beginning of 2025, Peter Kirkland and Paul Hick were convinced the mRNA vaccine had successfully induced FMD antibodies, an indication it was going to protect the animals against the virus. So what we did is we said, we believe this vaccine works. Let's try the exact same vaccine in some cattle um, in a place where we can challenge them with FMD. So it was off to the island of Reims on the Baltic Sea in Germany's north where the Friedrich Loeffler Institute permitted the vaccine to be tested in cattle exposed to foot and mouth disease. These agents may only be studied in laboratories and animal facilities of the highest containment level. Bio the facility's labs are regarded for having the highest biosecurity containment levels, allowing for Peter and Paul to see the mRNA vaccine put to the ultimate test. Seeing the disease was actually quite challenging. It is a rough disease for cattle to get. It dawned quite slowly that our vaccinated cattle weren't going to get sick. Um, the control animals developed the lesions of foot and mouth disease and they got quite sick before they were treated. The vaccinated animals who were basically co-housed with them were fine. The scientists waited for a delayed response in the vaccinated cattle, but it never came. It's one of the highlights of my career. We've discovered a few new viruses and things like this, but Foot and mouth disease globally is the number one pathogen and to be able to develop a new vaccine without even using live virus is a massive breakthrough. It's, there's no question it's a world first. Did you go and have a few beers? No, we had a quiet chat, but... <laughs> You're in Germany. I thought you might be on the Steins. A few pretzels or something? No, no. Um... We were working. <laughs> And that work continues. The scientists are now trialling a similar vaccine that would protect cattle against lumpy skin disease. Importantly, they're also preparing to submit the mRNA foot and mouth disease vaccine for regulatory approval with the Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority. That's a process that could take months, if not years. I think most Australians have faith in our regulatory bodies, first of all, that any vaccine that is made for use in animals has to go through a very thorough approval process. So, yeah, look, I'm not too worried about it, but I think we, we owe it to people to make sure that they understand that this is safe, uh, it, uh, it won't persist in meat and milk products, and that it's got to go through a very thorough approval process before it goes into any animal. Meanwhile, the University of New South Wales RNA Institute, which typically works on human vaccines and cancer treatments, is getting ready should it be required to make the FMD mRNA vaccine in the event of an outbreak. All hands on deck and we'll just start working 24-7, so yeah. But yes, we we'll hopefully don't have to do this, but we're getting everything ready for it. And if you have a drug that... Professor Pelly Thordarsson is director of the Institute. He anticipates vaccine production could ramp up in a matter of weeks. This is what, one reason why mRNA technology was the uh, solution to the COVID crisis, it is fairly fast and easy to scale up compared to conventional methods. And that's really the reason why we are putting our bets here on mRNA in terms of uh, foot and mouth disease. It's going to be quicker and easier to scale up if we have to. But it is still a novel technology, so there are some things to iron out. A benefit of the proposed mRNA vax is that it would require less refrigeration, making it easier to use in hot temperatures. Another is what's known as DIVA capability. That means vaccinated animals could be distinguished from infected ones. That would help in terms of treating livestock and resuming access to export markets. Once FMD is reported, it can take years after the disease is eradicated to reopen those export trades. I grew up on a farm, uh, on a sheep and uh, dairy farm in Iceland. 
So this is like coming back a full circle to be able to uh, work with the Department of Plant and Industries on solving pressing challenges for Australian farmers. So I, I feel like I'm giving a little bit back to my childhood, although in a different continent. This vaccine is the equivalent uh, for cows as penicillin was for humans. New South Wales Minister for Primary Industries Tara Moriarty is looking to Canberra to back the project. These viruses don't stop at state borders and they don't stop at international borders. Uh, so I would call on the Commonwealth to be working closely with us and to be doing more in this space. Federal Agriculture Minister Julie Collins says the Commonwealth is contributing to red meat industry research through MLA. I'm a little bit surprised the federal government hasn't got behind this project in a more meaningful way. There's an opportunity to increase profitability, productivity and build jobs and exports around this. The foot and mouth mRNA vaccine has only been trialled in cattle, but the scientists hope with more research it could be applied in other species. Assuming it's eventually approved, it's anticipated it would initially only be used in the event of an outbreak. And I'd imagine that the government would be looking to ring fence that outbreak by vaccinating around that outbreak to prevent its spread. Um, it wouldn't be a case of vaccinating the whole herd just in case it comes to Australia. That's expensive and not necessary at this point. Back at rugby, Georgie Hick is excited by news of the breakthrough. It's amazing that we're actually, um, to, to see us sort of having some, some developments brought forward by Australians, but it would certainly be a lot better to never have to deal with it in the first place. In the meantime, she's doing her best to keep these cattle disease-free. Well, they know I'm keeping them safe. <laughs>